A customer sent in their Saab 9.3 ECM and the issue that they're experiencing is injector malfunctions between the injector P0201 through P0204. So I'm going to show you how to open this up and resolve that issue. First thing we want to do is remove the three screws on the top or you're going to be using a T15 tip. And next we're going to be using these tools. The end of this tool is not threaded and it is over here. So we're going to put it where the screws were and we're going to screw it in as if it was a screw. And the non-threaded side is just going to go all the way through to the bottom and then the threads are going to catch and slightly and slowly push the lid up. Okay. And you want to put a decent amount of pressure on these because you do want the threads to catch. Otherwise, if you don't put a lot of pressure, it could cause it to just strip. And you can tell it's starting to open it. So I'm putting a decent amount of pressure here. Um, there is a circuit board on the back here. So we're going to want to make sure we equalize the amount of force so we don't cause it to bend like it is a little bit right now. One of the things we can do is use an X-Acto blade to start cutting some of the gasket that's holding it in. Something else we can do is use a flathead screwdriver, sneak it on one side, give it a little help, a little lift. Again, not too much because we don't want to bend it. So as you can tell, it's slowly opening and it's opening evenly, which is good, which is what we want. I'm going to put the screwdriver in here to hold it up while I remove the tool. And the tricky part, like I said, there is a circuit board on the back side of this metal plate. Um, so we don't want to knock off any of those components. So you have to kind of know where you can and can't put pressure. All right, and now it's open enough that I can just put my hands in there. And here we are. This metal plate is nice and flush. There is a slight amount of bending here, but it's minimal, so that shouldn't affect the circuit board. And same here, a slight amount of bending. So you always want to try and keep it as flush as you can uh, because we have these BGA type chips over here that are soldered with a ball grid array and those can be affected negatively if there's too much warping going on here. Now that we've opened up the unit, let's take a closer look at some of the components that we are going to be repairing. The first one is the IC chip over here and that's going to be the first repair we perform. We're simply going to replace it. The other two are the processors we spoke about earlier, the BGA type chips. Those commonly have cracked solder joints so we're going to want to reflow those to renew those joints. This is our IC chip in question and it is covered with some conformal coating here on the legs. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove a little bit of that coating using my metal brush here and we're going to be gentle. We don't want to go too hard and damage the PCB of course. We'll use a little isopropyl alcohol to clean it up. Next, I'm going to coat all of those pins with some solder and my iron. And we're using leaded solder. And we're going to put quite a bit. I want to make sure every single pin is covered. And I just made a little mistake here. We'll have to fix the mistake being I added a little bit of solder to the IC over to the right. There we go. And now we're going to use our hot air to actually remove it. Now because the circuit board is on a metal plate in the ECM, it acts as a heat sink, so we're going to need a lot of heat. And that's why I added that extra solder is I'm going to use both my iron and the hot air station in tandem so that I can remove the chip quicker without putting too much heat stress to the rest of the PCB. There we go. It is less damaging to the PCB to apply higher heat for a shorter amount of time than it is lower heat for a longer amount of time. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to one of our corner pins. And now we'll slide our IC in. Make sure all the pins look aligned. Oh. Okay, 
that looks pretty good to me. Let's lock it in by adding some solder on the other side without hopefully moving it too much. There we go. Now we can add some flux. And we'll remove that excess with our desolder wick. Don't want to remove too much. I might have removed a little too much. Might be okay. Let's clean that up a little bit. Visually, I'm not seeing any bridging, but let's make sure that all of our pins are properly soldered. So I'm gonna use my raking tool to hit every single pin. If one of them is not soldered in properly, it will move as the tool hits it and it looks like all of them are soldered in correctly. Next we're going to be reflowing both of these BGA chips and we're going to be using our rework machine for that. I call them BGA chips because of the way they are attached to the board. BGA which stands for ball grid array is how they are connected to the PCB. That array of solder balls can get damaged over time due to thermal expansion when the vehicle is running and contraction from the vehicle cooling down after use. These thermal cycles can create micro fractures in the solder balls preventing proper communication between the processor and the rest of the ECU. The reflow we are performing is going to melt all of the solder balls and refresh those bonds. To ensure we have reached the solder's melting point, we're going to gently prod the chip. If the chip is able to move slightly and bounce back to its original position, we have confirmed we have reached the solder's melting point and properly renewed those bonds. All right, we have replaced our gate driver IC down here. We have reflowed both of our processor BGA chips over here. Now we're gonna be ready to close it back up. And to do that, we are gonna to need to clear out some of that original gasket so we can make room for our new replacement gasket. And we don't need to do a perfect job. I'm just gonna remove the bulk of it. And of course we want to be careful not to damage the circuit board. And so this is where it can be a little tricky because the gasket is covering a couple of the components. So just be extra careful. Okay, we're gonna give it a quick little brush down get rid of some of those little pieces and we use the Permatex gasket maker to replace the original so it does come out pretty fast I'm probably putting a little too much but that's all right there we go now to close it back up I like to put the lid down and then we'll go ahead and physically push it down and so I did, so I just kind of goofed and I put my finger on the gasket and I just kind of spread it everywhere. So obviously try not to do that, but that's also why we wear gloves. All right, and there we go. And now we'll go ahead and put our screws back in. Okay, our unit is now all sealed up. There is one last thing we're gonna do and that is use some deoxit. And what we're gonna do is spray the contact pins here. So it'll prevent any oxidation to those pins and it'll also improve the connections between the connector and the pins themselves. So we'll do a little spray into both, not too much. And then I have this special little brush that we're gonna use. And there's nothing really that special other than it's easy to get inside the connector to brush around that deoxit. Now we're ready to send this back to our customer. If you found the video helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.